This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we are getting ready to get started. We, we promise we were not gonna keep you very long. It's gonna be short, simple, to the point, but what we're gonna be discussing today is a an area of concern with a lot of advisors over the 15 years that I've dealt with in uh, independent distribution on what happens upon demise uh, with their clients. So we're, we're coining this webinar, client retention and generational control. And you're gonna learn today on how we've solved for this uh, concern that is very, very much at the top of mind or something that is being talked about, you know, at the family table or uh, in circles that you're surrounding yourselves with other financial advisors. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. Again, like I said, it's not going to be very long. Uh, 30 minutes is our agenda here today. You're going to learn about not only our team, but what I will also let you know your team. So the typical advisor that's out there right now, you know, he ends up being sort of a one man show, going it alone. Maybe he has an admin, maybe two admins, works in a Regis executive office, working out of the trunk of his car, possibly. What you're going to discover today is that you have an unprecedented opportunity to tap into an entire team. Uh, and that's what we're going to share with you today. Also, how do you retain clients? Guaranteed. That word's very important for a lot of you on this call. Concerns for financial advisors, uh, why you are already an estate planner, uh, and why and how we apply Nevada law and why that's even on here is going to be very important at the very end of this call. So today, Myself, Carter Wilcox, and founder. I'm joined here uh, as well with my vice president of and uh, director of planning strategies, Andrew Victor. Andrew, say hi. Make sure everybody can hear you. Okay. Hello, all. It's it's good to talk to you all. Um, and then uh, also sliding right through here, we have our guest speaker, Phil Hoshkis, uh, CFP, Chief Wealth Strategist with Trust Bank. Phil, say hi to everybody on the call today. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Phil, I really, really appreciate you, uh, number one, taking the time out of your uh, busy schedule here today. And as everybody knows, we are we are recording this, but you're going to want to say it's only 30 minutes. Um, but let's talk just a little bit about not only our strategic partnership that we've aligned with, but, you know, how far maybe we go back. And then, you know, what does advisor friendly trust services really uh, encompass as we start getting into the, the concern and the issues and, and the ultimate solution that we can provide for advisors listening today. So advisor friendly trust services um, is really something that every advisor now has the ability to tap into and trust banks perspective. Why did you form the advisor friendly platform? <clears throat> yeah, Carter, uh, great question. Uh, Basically, our, our uh, firm is a group of folks that came over from these very large trust companies, these very large banks. And, I, and I'm telling you this for context reasons is it, maybe unbeknownst to a lot of advisors out there um, who haven't you know, dug deep into their clients' actual trust documents, there may be already a trustee named, maybe uh, an independent family member, a, a friend another financial institution like a Wells Fargo name, you know, big Bank of America, Northern Trust, Harris Trust, name some big bank or so forth. Well, a lot of times, particularly if it's an institution, uh, large institutions will not work with the family's lifelong advisor. Maybe you have advisors on this call that have been working with families for 20 years. Well, if that family had had unbeknownst or or uh, unknowingly or or just you know out of happenstance was suggested that they name a corporate trustee that's a big bank, that big bank is going to actually take all of those assets and manage them, and the advisor will will you know no longer be working with that family. Uh, our firm, we took what we think is all the best traits and attributes of large trust companies and banks, and kind of left the rest behind. And we want to work with advisors. We, we want to help advisors retain their clients for, for other generations beyond the, even the generation that they're working with. And we actually have a program where we have advisors manage the money and we act as the trustee. 
but it's not a check the box trustee like a lot of 800 number solutions are out there with big wirehouses. We are actual real folks that you can you can uh, have a thought partner arrangement with and unlike an 800 number arrangement or a call center arrangement, we're the actual folks doing the work on the accounts that you're talking to. You're not talking to a representative that then has to go through three or four layers to, to get to the folks that are actually doing the work that never get to talk to your client uh, and never get to talk to you. So that's why we put this program together and we think uh, we, we, we think it's a, it's a great solution and, and it's probably the, 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 the future of the trust business actually is having independent advisors work with a, with a fiduciary trustee with their clients. So, Phil, um, our, our next slide here that we've got is about, you know, um, the collaborative team approach. And, you know, I've been over and I've met, you know, the CEO and, you know, the, um, the CFO and the, the chief fiduciary officer and all that. Um, the whole purpose of your and our strategic partnership and taking this collaborative team approach was really to be able to have advisors utilize de facto your own team by partnering up with uh with csi financial group in, in conjunction and, and directly being able to have trust bank as a, an integral part of that will you just share a little bit and on the screen here you guys might be able to see you know more than half of all rias last uh in 2016 had clients that died so that again is a very big concern and can you touch on what normally as you just were talking about on what happens whenever you become a trust friendly relationship with advisors on how you can proactively take care of that well in advance and and how successful it's been by having that team approach you know in your own firm there yeah no uh first the the, the team approach is huge i you know at, at a time in my life i was an independent advisor and and, and actually worked with <laughs> with carter uh, on, on the insurance imo world uh just on my own and just having one person like Carter to help out and, and be a thought partner with was huge, let alone having this kind of track to run on where you've got attorneys and CPAs and, and uh, you know, other advisors and so forth to, to, to talk to and help your client with. Because I think, I think that, to me, is the key to the team approach and all these different uh, folks on the screen is um, – here, here's someone that can help you and uh, help your client and a process to help you help your client more importantly. Um, getting back to the point about um, why is it important to kind of set this stuff up ahead of time is, you know, unbeknownst to a lot of advisors and a lot of clients, um, besides naming a successor trustee, uh, there, there's also a mechanism in Carter's estate plan to actually name the financial advisor for the trust assets as well. So, so your firm can actually be named in the documents along with the trust company. And there's nothing more uh, solid um, of a way to, to show that the, the family's intent was to have the advisor manage the assets and for this other third party to be the trustee. Yeah, and we're definitely gonna be getting into that uh, here later on in the presentation. Uh, also, you know, on here, you know, what we have is, Andrew Victor, who is the director of planning strategies, and, and Andrew is such a huge integral part in the planning strategies that we put together. And I, I say this all the time, Andrew, and you probably get tired of me hearing, uh, hearing me say this, but product is not the unmet need in this industry, right? We've got plenty of product to be able to solve uh, you know, problems, so to speak. But really it's about, and what Phil alluded to, the process that we have um, developed and refined over basically the last year that now enables us to actually plan properly and have this holistic opportunity for advisors to differentiate themselves by extension in the communities that they serve. So just touch on a little bit, if you don't mind, Andrew, on some of the things that you do that also separates us from, uh, from the rest. Gotcha. Um, well, I, I mean, I would say first and foremost, one of the things that's unique with our, our platform is that we protect the assets with the estate plan. We protect the relationship long-term and generationally using Trust Bank as the uh, successor trustee. And then part of it as well is we protect the assets and, and also the income, which is very important 
for the client themselves. A lot of the planning that I do, which most people in the country do not, I would say probably 98% of financial advisors out there do not approach planning this way, is I focus on income first for the client, and then once we satisfy the income need, we look at uh, protecting assets so that they may grow. Uh, and then within that plan as well, we look at tax mitigation or tax avoidance. How do we uh, set up a situation, an income stream, where the client is no longer paying the voluntary taxes that they normally would do if they didn't have somebody thoughtful looking at their overall plan and how tax is affected? So that's an area that you'll see a lot in terms of, of the, this, this language we use called tax mitigation, and it's absolutely critical. Um, you know, I just did a plan for a pair of 62-year-olds, a husband and wife, who had only half a million dollars. If they had done nothing, uh, just left it in the mutual fund accounts they had, they were looking at running out of money in their mid-80s. Now, with the plan we put together, because we're avoiding significant taxes, we're also avoiding significant risk, their estate's worth $1.3 million when they're 90. So that's a significant difference. And that's just part of it. And what we do is we talk on the phone about the client, what their objectives are. Um, and then if you want, I can be on the phone with you and the client to walk through the, the plan that I put together for you. So, I mean, obviously, again, you know, having a uh, this this team that has really coalesced, um, I, Phil, I think you said earlier, right? Like, you know, how it even all came about is kind of sort of, providential if you will yeah. that we were able to put together such an amazing team that for all intents and purposes these IARs or RIAs or insurance agents producers now have the ability to utilize all of the talents and all the expertise of everybody that's on the screen right now so um you know going back to the to the past right imagine how it was when we first met yeah. compared to what it is that we've been able to bring together. Yeah. I, I wish we would have had this 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, or maybe 15 anyway. Okay. Yes. Um, so let's get into what is the all caps biggest concern for advisors. So um, now I have this article I can share with anybody that, that wants it uh, as a, as a resource and as a reference, but according to investment news, 66% of children, fire their parents, financial advisors, after receiving an inheritance. So the biggest concern, right? Losing control of the clients, losing control of the assets right there. And then ultimately at the end of the day, most advisors that I've worked with in the last 15 years want to be able to sell their business, retire. Well, if you are losing assets 66% of the time, and we'll get into some more staggering stats later, uh, losing the value of your practice for whenever those assets are evaporating because the demise of your clients that you have the relationship with as their trusted advisor, well, how are you going to ultimately value your practice in the first place? And what can make it invaluable is what we're going to be discussing as we continue through this um, discussion in this webinar. So there's a terminology that uh, I have enlightened a few people here <laughs> recently um, called from shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves. Now, um, this is, a, again, a Forbes contributor on an, an article that was in the Wealth Advisor online publication. The Wealth Advisor has about 230,000 subscribers uh, that are RIAs, registered reps, insurance agents. And this is an article that was just recently, August 24th, you know, and it, and it talked about this shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves and uh, from, you know, in th the three generational cycle. So in here, in this article, and again, I have this one as well for you. If you employ traditional estate planning methods, there is a 70% chance that the wealth that you have accumulated will be gone by the second generation and a 90% chance that it'll be gone by the third generation. Hence, from shirt sleeve to shirt sleeve and three generation cycle. So um, this is another, if you guys wanna Google in the story of Francis Rowe, who uh, I have this podcast, I'll be more than happy to share this with you as well. The problem becomes 
when the patriarch creates the fortune, and that fortune could be five hundred thousand dollars. Is that fair? Yeah. Right. That fortune could be five hundred million. The problem is the next generation was directly connected, but the third generation wasn't connected. And if you don't do it properly, then that's what's going to happen. You're going to fall to that um, the same issue. So here again, another article: the greater wealth transfer. Now this is a, a an excerpt that I took out of this article from Accenture, and at the very end it says, you know, conversely, firms that fail to act or miss the next generation's expectations of wealth service providers run the risk of losing assets at an accelerating rate. So not only are you going to lose it 66% of the time, but if you don't find a process that you can employ yourself, it's inevitably going to happen. So Andrew, problem solved, the 100% solution. 100% solution. Yeah, exactly. So um, again, you can go online and you can find article after article after article. It didn't take long to put this information and these resources together to be able to find uh, on this article over on the far right, you'll see the 2% where that comes from, stay with the parent's advisor, five to 10% stay with the parent's advisor upon demise. And then earlier we talked about 66%, right? So that's where- 66% leave. And so yeah. somewhere between 2% and 34% of your book of business is gonna stay with you when a client passes away. So that's scary. And, and the way we lock that down is within the trust, we have the successor trustee be trust bank. And with their platform in terms of the advisor uh, friendly platform, you can still manage the money. You can actually be listed as the money manager in the trust document. Yeah, so um, so this, the solution, and this is the only solution of its kind, <coughs> is the E-State plan. So um, to Andrew's point, we have the GHT, which stands for Generational Holding Trust, which is a sub-trust inside of the Revocable Living Trust, and then the TIA application. Now, the TIA stands for Trust Investment Advisor. Again, to Andrew, your point, you could be named in the document. So Phil Hotchkiss of Trust Bank could be named as Trust Investment Advisor. And this is codified law. Inside what we do is we use the most trust friendly, trust site estate in the union in a, um, in a, a way called jurisdictional shopping. So I'm gonna read this excerpt verbatim here. And, and again, this is another article that I can share with you from a uh, an attorney law firm <clears throat> that talks about the Nevada revised statutes, NRS, where you retain control. Under Nevada statute, the powers exercised by the investment or distribution trust advisor are at the sole discretion of such advisors and are binding on all other persons. The appeal of the directed trust is that family members themselves or advisors, everybody on this call listening today, with whom they have had a long-term relationship, can retain control of investment and distribution decisions rather than having to accept the decisions of the trustee. So what that means to everybody on this call is that since you already have and are named as the trusted advisor of the clients you work with today, if done and messaged properly, and only by utilizing our platform can you do this, you will be able to retain control of the assets and those clients for generations. So, and I know that we said we're gonna keep this at about 30 minutes. I think we're doing very well uh, at, at yeah. this point. We're, you know, we're halfway through. You know, let's talk a little bit about our advisor partner platform um, and what we have coined the four pillars to success. So in the 15 years in distribution and the few years of the retail side of things that I've been on, and, and Andrew, you know, you've been out there, done plenty of retail business. The thing that's been lacking and missing in the IMO distribution space are these four things. The advisor training, the advisor mentoring, the marketing, and the foundational part of this whole thing is the support. So, um, you know, you've seen how successful that we've already taken 
advisors who have tapped into this platform. Uh, and Phil, maybe you can even touch on this just a little bit on just how successful advisors, when they discovered these things that we've addressed on how successful by having this clean, this team collaborative approach and all the training that we give and provide ongoing, I might add, these are these are not platitudes that you'll hear you know, from other uh, organizations like ourselves. These are actual field tested, not beta tested solutions that we are providing for advisors to tap into. And Phil, why don't you just touch on a little bit on the success you've seen already um, on these, the, just a small sample size of advisors that have tapped in. I'd be happy to Carter. It, it is phenomenal and transformative to, to see what's happened to these uh, advisors and agents um, and their approach to clients and the just the the level uh, of value that they've incrementally added to the client relationship through this process through this platform I can't say enough good things about it I've, I've seen just like I said phenomenal success in a short period of time where Carter and his team have taken advisors just by just putting them on this process, and monitoring it, and supporting the process, um, it, it, the growth is is just astronomical. Yeah, it's been, and thank you for that, Phil. And um, Andrew, I know you want to touch on this just a little bit too, on just how, uh, you know, as we've been developing this over the last year, you know, we, we've refined it, you know, time and time again, right? It's, it's ever evolving, and we've taken it from, you know, theory, in essence, right, to ap actually applying it to the field and then the field then applying it conversely directly to the consumer. Yeah, uh, and I'll give you an example of uh, a financial advisor team in Texas. Uh, when they came on board two months ago, we started, they started taking, uh, we've gone through nine clients uh, that they brought through the trust platform and then they brought me in on the financial planning side. All nine have implemented the financial plan, well, obviously the trust, but also the financial planning we put together. So that's 100% success rate. And what's more important is that they went from basically managing a part of the assets that these different clients had, or in, in, in the case of two of them, none of the assets, to now having control uh, and management over all the assets either directly through annuity products, through uh, the insurance uh, tax-free income vehicle we use called the Torca, and, and also using Trust Bank to manage some of the, the uh, ongoing brokerage assets. So uh, it's been a phenomenal success. And what we found worked really well is going through the system, going through the process and sticking to that um, to that cycle as opposed to, you know, every client meeting is going to be different so it, it, it is a process if we stick to the process then I can really help uh, expand your business um, and also get more clients too yeah so really what we've done here is we have created professional contrast unlike ever before for these advisors is that, is that fair to say Andrew yeah and just to throw a number out there I think it's at 275,000 a target we wrote in the, in the last two months too so that doesn't hurt either no no that, that that's for sure so and for most of you that are on here and you know we are we really are and we wanted to direct this mainly to those um AUM getters out there right you're out there your holistic planners you know you incorporate assets under management and annuities and life insurance, which is that's our ideal advisor that we want to work with um, by tapping into this estate planning platform that we've created and developed. It really is enhancing and differentiating you out there. But just to sort of summarize everything and the reason why, you know, the fear for advisors is that whenever their clients die and this actually is inclusive of those insurance agents only nothing against that they just you know if they're if they're primarily focused on just insurance well i can't tell you how many different times i've had an advisor that was totally expecting and had maybe been developing relationships with the next generation right so as estate planners and what makes you an estate planner automatically even if you're just insurance licensed by the way is as soon as you fill out a beneficiary form 
you say who the beneficiary is going to be, you have now planned their estate, which makes you an estate planner. And having this idea that I'm going to create an opportunity for myself to name a beneficiary, a natural person, so that I, as the advisor of record, I actually take out the life insurance, you know, death claim form, um, and I actually take the check out to the family. I can't tell you how many different times, and I'm sure this number is staggering, and maybe this has happened to those of you on the call today. How many times you thought it was going to be an opportunity to be able to reinvest those assets? Then lo and behold, what happens? You don't have the relationship with those clients that you probably thought you did. Well, again, and I don't think I can stress this enough. We have the only solution, if done properly and on our platform, where you can retain those clients, you can maintain those assets to and through retirement and beyond. So with the generational holding trust, the sub trust, and the trust investment advisor application, call us, find out more about it. But I'm telling you, we have the solution. What do we call it, Andrew? The 100% solution? 100% solution. So 2% to 34%, right? Yeah, I or wanna, I want to keep 100% of the assets, not 2%. Yeah, or 100% of them, 100% of the time. Yeah. So um, lots more about that. I know we want to keep this 30 minutes. I think we've done a very good job. This is unlike anything else. If you're listening to this and you're thinking, yeah, you know, there's probably something to it. Maybe give us a call, get, send us an email, spend 30 minutes with us. We promise you that we will not only change your practice, but we will help you with client acquisition and the client retention. So uh, contact us here at our offices at 888-316-6040. You can ask for either Andrew Victor uh, or myself, Carter Wilcoxon. Um, before we let everybody go, Phil, do you have any last thoughts about the advisor friendly platform? No, just really excited about it. I truly do think it's the future. So. That's the way we're going to go. Andrew, yeah. um, any for anybody? Uh, no. And, and if you do want to give a shout and, and talk a little bit about some of the planning, uh, platform I put together, uh, we can talk about that in terms of where that fits in the process with the, uh, advisor partner platform and the e-state plan. Perfect. Awesome. So with that, everybody have a great day, a great evening. Uh, you probably listened to this recorded in the first place. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, and we look forward to being able to enhance your practice and ultimately be able to, to grow value inside of it. So thank you all and have a great day.